goes back to October of 2008 when after a routine colonoscopy I was diagnosed with rectal cancer and that started a 14 month odyssey where I did the whole western medicine cut burn poison was put on some chemotherapy right away and radiation and that went through Christmas and they were planning to have uh, surgery in April but they had to put that off because I was hypersensitive to the chemotherapy and I was hospitalized in the emergency room in the ER for uh, massive pulmonary embolisms at the end of December and I was then put on blood thinner but eventually I got better and went through the operation and for that following summer, the summer of 2009, I was scheduled to be uh, to undergo 12 rounds of adjuvant chemotherapy which is uh, two hours every two weeks and I was again very hypersensitive to this chemotherapy and I only was able to withstand three treatments before I was hospitalized because I was so nauseous I couldn't even drink fluids and I had lost about 60 pounds. They removed the tumor and they reconnected the lower end of my um, colon and while that healed I had to have a temporary ileostomy. Um, after the tumor was originally removed I, they found out I had a propensity for adhesions but I found that out the hard way because I kept getting intestinal blockages and they ended up having to um, go in and operate four separate times over the course of the next year. I got better and then they put me on their monitoring which is the standard thing for this kind of cancer was that you went in for scans and uh, checks for the first two years every three months and for the next year every four months and for the final two years and then you were monitored for five years for the final two years every six months and everything was coming they'd scan and everything was coming back negative there was nothing until my next to the last visit then they found these tiny little nodules in my lungs about four months later they scheduled a scan for me and they noticed an enlarged lymph node in one of my lungs and so they scheduled a biopsy for that and I went in and this was in February of 2014 and uh, I had that biopsy done and two weeks later I was in my oncologist's office and he told me well your cancer's back you have now what's called stage 4 metastatic colorectal cancer and if you have chemotherapy your life expectancy is two and a half years if you don't have chemotherapy it's more like one and basically said that's all we can't do anything more for you and they were they were going to fit me for another um, port they, uh, when I had my infusions the stuff that they inject you with is so caustic that it has to go into a major artery because it would destroy smaller arteries so my thought then was that if I've got a limited amount of time left I'm not I'll be darned if I'm going to spend it feeling like that and in the meantime, um, I scheduled an appointment with a therapist that I'd been seeing just off and on through this cancer stuff. And he listened to my story, uh, and he said, well, what you need is a healer. And he knew about Dr. Wu. Called Dr. Wu, not knowing him from any, anybody. I was really not knowing what to make of this, because I was a complete, like I said before, I was a complete uh, follower of Western medicine. And I, you know, I thought, well, you know, I didn't really know if it would work, but it's certainly something to try because I've run out of everything else and so I ended up uh, making an appointment with Dr. Wu and he put me uh, right away on this uh, regimen of tea that I had to drink every three three times every day and he immediately gave me dietary restrictions and I had tween massage for an hour every week and that went on for about six months. I was showing no symptoms but I but in that six months I just kept feeling better and better and better like better than I'd really ever felt even when I was not in cancer treatment so the mind is a very powerful thing too which is something that Ming talks about as well this is back before I totally severed ties with my oncologist he, he wants me to come in and have a scan and Dr. Wu said well what will you do with that information and I couldn't really see an upside plus the fact that when you go for a scan you subject yourself to about a hundred times the radiation that a normal x-ray gives you and I didn't think that was a particularly good idea. So I decided to be blissfully ignorant. So I don't know. I suspect I am. I feel fine. By um, all 
I don't want to jinx it by getting too cocky about it, but by all the actuarial standards that my oncologist quoted, I should have been dead a year ago, a year and a, almost, well, a year ago, February. I started to lose my hair and my throat started to feel really weird and I got this lump in my throat and I thought it might have been my thyroid. So I went back to the doctors, they told me I was fine and I wasn't getting any better, I was getting worse and I was getting worse. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't move, my joints started to hurt it was like one thing after another. I was getting heart palpitations and just blood pressure fluctuation. And so I went back to the doctors. I asked the doctor, um, can you give me a test? I think I may have Hashimoto's because at this point I had a lot of time lying in bed and laying on the sofa. She didn't really want to do it. She said there was nothing wrong with me and I had to insist on it and finally, um, I went for an ultrasound and the uh, radiologist there confirmed I had Hashimoto's. So that would probably explain the heart beat situation. But I decided to see an endocrinologist just to make sure. So I go see the endocrinologist and she suggests I see a cardiologist. So they give me the stress test with an ultrasound. Everything is fine, but I'm not feeling good. Originally got sick in September, and here it is June, and I'm still sick. I leave there, and I'm very frustrated because now I am not only having weird heartbeats, and I'm still losing my hair, um, I'm getting like these panic attacks, flushes of anxiety. My toes hurt, my ankles hurt, my knees hurt, my hips hurt, everything is killing me, but yet I'm fine, and everyone that I'm seeing is telling me I'm fine, you need some Xanax and you need some Zoloft. I go and I see another doctor and she is a, a, an osteoarthritis doctor because I thought, well, maybe I have arthritis. My x-rays came back clear. And she said, you don't have any arthritis, you're fine. So I had asked her for a Lyme disease test because that was the only other thing that I can think of that would make my joints hurt and I had to actually battle with her before she would write me out a slip for a blood test. Thankfully, I got a positive because there are plenty of false negatives. And so I was CDC positive. And so now I had an answer to what was going on and I was so grateful and thankful. Oh, this is wonderful, four weeks of antibiotics and I'll be cured. And I started to feel better. And I was so grateful that I started to feel better. But then a couple of weeks after that, it started all over again. It just increasingly got worse and worse and worse. And I started to fall into a depression. And no one would believe me because I looked fine, but I couldn't breathe like I used to breathe. I had no energy. You know, I was getting depressed. Before I had left for Florida many years ago, I used to work for um, a doctor and his wife. He's a plastic surgeon. and. I would do uh, facials and chemical peels there. You know, I kept in touch with them. So his, his wife called me up and she said, well, why don't you come in, you know, every once in a while. And then one client in my chair, she had a really bad headache and I was doing um, some acupressure points on her. And it relieved her, her sinus headache. And she said to me, you know, the only person that's ever touched me that's helped me like that is a Chinese doctor that um, I met quite a few years ago, and his name is Dr. Ming Wu. I really, I was afraid to even talk to Dr. Wu because I just felt here's gonna be another person who's gonna look at me and tell me that, you know, it's all in my head, just take some Xanax and you know, you'll be fine. So I go into the room and I meet uh, Dr. Wu and he took my pulse for about 10 minutes. He instantly told me that I had thyroid issues. Then I started to cry and I said, Dr. Wu, I have Lyme disease and I am sick and I need help. And he said, we will get rid of your Lyme disease and we will get rid of your Hashimoto's. So he opens up the, the back of the little Johnny Co and I feel this warm, like clamping. And as I'm lying there, 
it's getting tighter and tighter and he's putting more and more of these things on. So the session is over with and um, I get out of there and I sit in the car and I am mentally and physically exhausted. And then I said, you know what? I don't know what it is. I don't know what those cups did. I don't know what that massage did. I don't know what being in his energy did to me, but it, it did something and I needed more of that. And so I started to see Dr. Wu every week. And I did that for about 10 or 12 weeks. One of the things I'm so grateful is that he lets you know that you just don't heal the body. It's, it's all connected. It's your mind and your spirit. That opened up a whole new world for me because I realized I couldn't take a pill. There's just really no pill to kill Lyme disease. And for the first time, I actually had hope and I felt like this was going to work because I trusted someone and someone believed that it wasn't in my head. Someone made me feel normal again, made me feel like I was a worthy human being. I was more than a prescription of Xanax and Zoloft. I don't know how he does it, but whatever he has really is a gift. You should go see a doctor. The doctor is going to recommend surgery chemo radiation for every cancer patient. That's the Western medicine protocol. But who am I? That means your awareness. See, doctor gave you a medical opinion, can be wrong. But that's their protocol. But if you already see a doctor, you want to take the advice, then you practice who am I when you see a doctor. You have fear, scare, panic. A fear, that means not, you lost who am I? The chemo make it worse, worse, die dangerous, but you are because you're attached when you have fear. That's why you lost who am I? Dangerous. Because you are the one in the pizza experience. The doctor get you the medication. They don't know you. You have to know who am I. When I prescribe for a patient, it's not who am I. I cannot pass who am I on the patient. They get to practice themselves. They, are, they have the choice. That means you as a patient, you're going to take the medical advice, a medication. That means you're going to practice who am I. If you make you feel better, OK, fine. That means you make it. If not, it get worse and worse. What happened? You know practice who am I. That means you, you're going to turn around. You decide for yourself who am I. No one else can do that, who am I for you? Only yourself. Because you control your life. You take over the power. Capping DRV is very good for how people release the common cold, allergy, flu, fever, low back pain, arthritis, anxiety. Also, many Westerners, uh, they don't understand very important thing is the after the cupping, have a black and blue and blister in the skin. That means it's a better result because the cupping release toxic whatever needs to come out. The modern people and the Western people, they don't understand, they get scared. They, they, they think it's an accident. Actually, it's not an accident. In the ancient time, uh, in countryside, people really practice for many generations. Everyone knows when you get black and blue and the bluster, even when it's breaking, things breaking out, it's a healing. If you don't have a Problem. You don't need to heal. That means no black and blue and no, no blister. When you have black and blue or blister, that means your body has problem. It's released.
one size yin, one size yang, you cannot stop with them. You cannot stop it. You, you think you, the more you want just happiness, the more is problem is. Because happy at the same time, see this side, is suffer. Like you are pain, no pain, no gain. <laughs> pain is normal. <laughs> but people don't want to pain, they cover up their pain, make a mess. In yang, in everything, in our life, in the universe. That means you want to be perfect, fix everything, no. The more you fight, the more problem. See, we don't need to kill all the bad boys, no. Bad boys, they're gonna learn sooner or later themselves. <laughs> Good boy and bad boy is balance. <laughs> no fighting, right? Like cancer is bad boy, do you kill all the bad boys? You, you, we, I don't need to kill all the cancers, y'all. I just live with them alone. But you're strong, the good boy is strong. See, we live with a bad boy. We share the house, our body. We have good cell and cancer cell live in the same body. But when you weak, you fear, then that's why the cancer is so violent. The bad boy is violent. If you ground in yourself, just be in the moment. See, even a tiger, they, they not act, not do anything. Carefree. If you're carefree in the moment, the tiger not bother. Work with the tiger. Just leave them alone. The tea I have is from this high mountain and the ancient tree. That means the tea tree hundred or older than hundred years old. That's because the old tree, the root so deep, they actually, the energy, the cheese so strong, like they have 600 kind of mineral vitamin instead of only 30 kind. That's why it's a, as a healing energy in the tea. And the older tree is like, because they not, cannot master produce, and you have to know the farmer, you need connection. They not, so, not, not produce to sell in a big supermarket, like some tea may be 100,000 pounds a year produce in Wuyi Mountain or in Phoenix Mountain, the Wulong tea. This is like old too, from 1970. That's a, from China Tea Corporation, the, the older tea company, the Ferro Tea Company. That's the treasure. Look. Okay, two of us finish this one.
the woman. Um, like a jewelry, we go to the store, find something. Oh, it's very cute, very pretty. We we buy and they keep it, keep in the box. Me, um, go every city and the first time go to a tea store. <laughs> I try the tea and buy it. And if if it's good, he he keep it, keep the box. So. Mean like the tea, like the woman, like the jewelry. <laughs> the tea we have here in the Wu Mountain. It's no pollutants, we don't need to spray anything. It's natural. Even we have wild tea, it's from the wild mountain. That's the best one. It's because the older tree, like 100 years old, is better quality. Not only better quality, but also healing energy too. The chi energy is so strong. Example, the older tree, like 100 years or older, they have 600 kind of nutrient environment in the tea. Like normally, if you grow in a farm, five-year tea tree, only 30 kind of nutrient, 30 kind of mineral environment. But the older tree is more nutrient, and the chi is more stronger. When your chi is strong, then virus or flu will not bother you. Yeah, because your chi is strong, your chi can take care. Smart chi, do whatever you need. It's healing for your body. A lot of time we have monkey mind. There are many people worry, anxiety. It's not really who am I? It's an ego. It's from society. The monkey might take over, but you lost who am I? How do you gonna see who am I? That means you listen to yourself silent. The more feel yourself, tend it to yourself, then the monkey mind is still there. It's a balance, like yin and yang. Who am I become the emperor of the monkey mind? That means you are the host, they are the guest. It's a balance. It's a practice every day. Every day I get up in the morning, I'm silent. I pray with a cup of tea. I smell the tea and go inside, feel myself. That's a who am I practice. When you go silent, you let go, and you can see all angle. It go deeper, deeper every day until to the empty state, they call Wu Wei. That means your body, my spirit, all can become one. I'm air, I'm light, I'm water flow. Then I repeat this mantra every day in my life. That's my medita meditation mantra before I go to bed. And I wait in the morning, I repeat the same sentence. And I teach many of my students, my patients, practice them. Later on they say, oh, I understand what means who am I. They mean let go of everything. Okay, you you can put put it in there. Can you see? Mhm. Okay. You you put it here. 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 Put it here.
Sayato Ninino, she, even my wife not let me practice acupuncture on her, but she let my son because she really want my son to learn the skill. And actually, my wife told me that my son has strong energy, put a needle in the chi, open up so strongly, feel so good. Yeah, I feel strongly. I already passed to him already. He right now ten years old. He can do the long form Tai Chi. He start can go up to the Kung Fu Association demonstration Tai Chi when he was five. Is he not open the business? He still want to learn the best skill, take care of friend and family. Even you can be a better doctor because you you not focus on the business. You just focus on helping people. I believe next generation that's the way, the best way to prevent them is teach everybody take over their power. They learn self healing and they have basic skill. They know what food for what kind of healing and learn about who they are, what type of body they are. That's called who am I.